Matthew Barzen, who is preparing to return to the USA, probably in a few weeks' time, after three weeks, uh, uh, after three years, I beg your pardon, in the post, during which uh, time he's visited 126 towns and cities in the UK and has been very keen uh, to underline the special qualities that underpin Britain's relationship with the United States. Uh, Mr Ambassador, good to have you with us. If it was three weeks, it would be a very short appointment, I'll grant you that. But it's good of you to come <laughs> in. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Hugh, thanks for having me. And please call me Matthew. We'll call you Matthew. And I have five days left. Five, five days. So you've so, extended it to a few weeks. Oh, but well, I was it? guessing, actually, that you may yeah. be sort of packing and things, but, but it's, it's as rapid as that. Yeah, which was always the plan. I mean, um, we all knew when we were appointed by President Obama that when he steps down, we step down. So you and the family back to the States? Yes, in fact, my wonderful wife and children actually went back a few months earlier to right. start the school year back in America. How difficult is it to wrap things up after three years? Oh, well, it has been such an honor and a joy to serve my country in this country for coming up on three and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sorry to say goodbye, but I knew I'd be saying goodbye now. And uh, I, will, I have memories that I will always treasure and never forget. If somebody asked you for highlights, I, I, I know you mentioned the president's visit from last year. Clearly, that was a very major event. But there will be other things that viewers will not know about. So what would you offer as a kind of mix of experiences? Well, you mentioned getting out and about around this amazing country to those 125 cities and towns. To that list, so that was a joy. Um, I would add, I had did um, 165. Yesterday I was in Kent for my final uh, secondary school, sixth form college workshop. So I have been able to listen to and learn from over 20,000 British young people. And it has been completely inspiring. And what we do is we spend about 50 minutes out of the hour and I ask them, uh, what frustrates you, what concerns you uh, about the United States and what we're up to? And we dig into some really hard stuff. And the good news is, and then we close on the happy bit of what inspires you about the US. Um, but at every single school all over this country, uh, they are paying attention. They have really high standards of what their own country and what my country are doing and saying. Uh, and to me, that is so encouraging because they're engaged. And the worst thing to see among that next generation was, on the one hand, if they were apathetic, or on the other hand, if they were really cynical, both of those things are so corrosive within our democracies and between them. And I see just the opposite. I see engagement. So if I had to pick one, it would be those six form sessions. When you say that you've discussed some challenging issues around their perceptions of the US, give us an example. What do they find challenging? Uh, guns and gun violence, racism, police misconduct or police brutality. Um, and increasingly over the last five months in the run-up to our presidential election, lots of confusion around electoral college, around candidates, all that kind of thing. So when they mention guns, are you then in the position where you're having to defend what the president's critics say is a lack of progress in that area? Yeah, we talk about it. We talk about the constitutional elements. I mean, we are, we are so similar as countries in so many ways. This is one area where we are so clearly different, different constitutionally, different culturally, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I try to, I don't feel like I'm in defending mode. I'm sort of in explaining mode. And I'm, not trying, to, I'm not trying to win an argument. I'm just no, trying no. to sort of explain where we've come from. No, we I'm, I'm came not. to our country with guns. We won our independence yeah, with course. guns. We yeah. settled our country with guns. So it's wrapped up in stuff in our history that is important for them to understand. They don't have to agree with it. No. I'm just wondering how difficult it is to get that across for people, as you say, from a very different culture. Yeah, it's a challenge. Um, and so we cover that. But of course, we move on. We talk about foreign policy. We talk about military intervention. We talk about humanitarian intervention. And um, by the end, I think we've gotten to a good space together. What did they ask you about the forthcoming presidency? What are they raised about? the? Let's talk about the election campaign itself, which was very divisive. And now, of course, the prospect of a very different kind of presidency. Mm. What kind of questions have you been asked about that? Process questions around how can you um, lose the popular vote and win the presidency. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and it's a bit like your system. I mean, it's a different system, but with first past the post yep. here, it, mm -hmm. it's similarly, it isn't. And sometimes, um, depending on where I am, if people like tennis, it's sort of like, well, if you're in a Wimbledon final, it's not the uh, woman or the man who scores the most points who wins necessarily. You have to score the right points in the right order at the right time. Mm -hmm. Similar kind of thing. The whole concept of the Electoral College, which, you know, for lots of people has become uh, a kind of emblem of something that's rather old-fashioned and doesn't deliver a democratic result. Um, you say you're not defending, um, but uh, do you feel you can explain that adequately to an audience of young people who think that if a candidate gets three million more votes than another candidate, clearly they should win? 
Yeah, I mean, we get in, whether I'm, they're convinced that our way is the right way or the first past the post system here, I mean, I think it's normal in our democracies that we will uh, debate whether we should change those systems or not. I mean, it's worked for us for a long time. It is old, um, but hey, it's the rules of our game. Everyone knows it. Well, let's look ahead a little yes. personally and, in fact, you know, to do with, with, with the states, with the United States. Um, and maybe I'll come in a second to what your plans are, uh, if, you, if you're uh, prepared to share those with us. Are you concerned about the next four years under President Trump? Well, I'm in a little tricky position here in that um, we are sort of at this in-between time, right? We've had our election. The new president hasn't taken office yet. My boss has eight more days. Mm. I am in my position. I can talk. Uh, about his administration. I can't make predictions and get into what's going to happen in, in the future. I guess to answer your question, I have a lot of faith. I'm about to go back to America. I have a lot of faith in the American people. I have a lot of faith in our institutions. I have a lot of faith in the amazing, and one of the joys of being an ambassador twice uh, for, the Ob for my country, um, is these amazing foreign service officers, our military personnel, our intelligence community, our development workers. And they all come through London, so many of them. And uh, they work so closely with their British counterparts, not only here in the UK, but all around the world to make the world more peaceful, more prosperous, and more just. And they do it professionally, and they do it with passion and with purpose. And this is the amazing part, and I've really learned from them, they do it, I mean, they are nonpartisan. I mean, I'm sure they, just like me, we have our personal politics and opinions, and they're really good at just keeping those out of it. Uh, I Give more than a penny for your thoughts on the fact that Mr. Trump seems to have been quite critical of some of the very people that you just mentioned there, the intelligence agencies. That's the reason I think lots of viewers would be very interested to know whether, you know, uh, do you look forward with confidence to the next four years? Let's turn the question around a bit. Well, I look forward to a few days ago, it was, I guess, about a week ago, you saw newly um, installed U.S. senators from all across the political spectrum, Democrats and Republicans, a chorus of, um, a really a unified chorus, I think, um, uh, raising alarm about what Russia did, um, proven by all 17 mm -hmm. different intelligence agencies in our intelligence community. Um, so a chorus of bipartisan support about that is not okay and there will be costs and consequences for trying to um, disrupt our democracy. So I'm heartened by that. It's an important point. I'm mean, concerned by it. I don't mean to sound as good news, but, but mm -hmm. that that is a bipartisan concern and a bipartisan commitment to do something about it. When the transition happens, um, there will be a new ambassador in London. Mm. How much of an interest will you take in who's appointed? Oh, well, I have absolutely no role in it. No, no role, I, what what I will interest? do, what I am excited to do, um, there's a wonderful tradition um, of previous ambassadors, if asked, um, helping out uh, and just giving. It's usually kind of small, silly questions. You mm. don't really know who to ask or who else to ask. Yeah. The, 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 uh, the living ambassadors who've had my job before, uh, Republican, Democrat, and career foreign service, um, have to a person been incredibly generous with their time and with their advice. And I'm inspired by their example, and I plan to do the same, if asked. What is Matthew Barzin going to be doing when he gets back to the States? Well, Hugh, I don't know what I'm going to do, uh, but I know where I'm going to do it which is in my adopted home city of Louisville, Kentucky, which is an amazing place, which I encourage you and all the viewers to come visit one day. <laughs> well, that's the home of many amazing people now that's very and tempting. <laughs> the late, great Muhammad Ali. That's very tempting. That's very tempting. I, what I'd like to do, Matthew, now, if it's okay with you, is got just a minute left. Do you have a message for the people of the UK? We're in a time of great change, you know, mm. in the UK, we've got our own political challenges. I haven't asked you about Brexit, but, you know, you've, uh, uh, the, the view of Mr. President Obama last year was very clear on that. Um, but do you have a message to the people of the UK as you leave? I do, and thank you for that opportunity. I'd like to thank you, Hugh, and everyone at the BBC for the amazing job you all do every day. Uh, great journalism. Um, I would add personally just to thank everyone in the UK, um, the people of the UK who've shown me and my family such a warm welcome from the very beginning. And then maybe broadening it out even more just sort of on behalf of the Americans here in the United Kingdom and back home, thank you for generations and generations of cooperation in the past. And then the final thought, if you will indulge me, well, I guess let's stay engaged together. And when I say stay engaged, I mean 
uh, the strength of this special relationship going forward. All those young people we talked about, I'm so confident in them, they're engaged. And engaged doesn't mean always agreeing. There's room for agreement and disagreement. Um, and uh, that's healthy, that's normal. That's been our history together. Um, let's never get apathetic. Let's never get cynical. Let's stay engaged with each other. Um, that's what makes this thing special. The strength of it lies in its flexibility. It's not some rigid or fragile thing. And that's been an honor to be a temporary steward of, and I'll continue as a citizen back in America. Mr. Ambassador, good to see you. And for the last time, thank you very much. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming in. Thank and you. We wish you well. Thank, thank you. you.